Thank you. Thanks. It, it wasn't originally in the program, but I had a question mark because um, each patient is a customer. It sounds really logical, but well, in my daily life, which is usually in healthcare, uh, a patient is not really ever a customer. This is my world. I don't know how many of you work in healthcare or affiliated to healthcare. One, all right. It's a really strange thing because everywhere else is uh, every, everywhere uh, stuff is happening to provide people with tools to manage stuff at home. Healthcare works, uh, it gets paid when you walk through that door. So it's actually a building which is always open, uh, where doctors are working, where you have to go and then you get a treatment or a prescription or something and you go home and the hospital, hospital gets paid. It's like a really old fashioned way of working for your customers. Um, and meanwhile, doctors are looking out, seeing what's happening with banks and mortgages and insurance companies and Uber and Airbnb and stuff. And well, it's kind of scary because they know things are going to change, but they're not really sure how to implement those changes in their daily life. Because when they open the door of their consultation room, the waiting room is full. And full means people, and people means payment. So there's not really much of a driver to change because as long as this is happening, doctors are getting paid and things are working. But the patients, which are actually customers during the rest of the normal life, they do like to change. Because uh, in daily life, they're used to, well, I don't have to tell you, but using mobiles, tablets, smartphones, uh, desktops, computers, everything. And in healthcare, we're still at the level where if you want something from your doctor, you have to call between 8.15 and 8.30. If you're 8.31, you get a tape saying, sorry, call tomorrow. If you actually uh, get in touch with someone, they're not gonna answer your question, but they're gonna promise you they'll call you back which probably they won't, or they will not at the time you uh, uh, made the agreement. So healthcare really struggling how to connect this person, which is a consumer, to the person they're receiving during the day, which is a patient. So we uh, invented Beter Dichtbij, which is a really international name, which means uh, better close. Um, and what we're trying to do is to uh, uh, provide easy to use services for consumers we call them consumers specifically, uh, to improve the relationship between them and their doctor or their nurse or their team of nurses or their GP, um, which is kind of original. We've been founded by 28 hospitals. So our main shareholder is a, a sort of a 28 hospitals branch united in the SAZ, which stands for Samenwerk en Algemene Ziekenhuis. They are the local, regional, small hospitals in the Netherlands. They're like really small. Um, what we're trying to do is to invent a platform or to build a platform focused on size. We don't want to build a platform for, uh, let's say, five asthma patients or six uh, pa people with chemotherapy. We want to build a platform which can be used by loads and loads and loads of patients. Uh, not just one, not just 10, but thousands. It makes it easier for us to build and to maintain Bigger is easier to maintain, but it also makes it easier for us to implement because when you've got an assistant to the doctor uh, who has, uh, let's like say, thousands of patients and for one of them she has to invite them to use Beter Dichtbij, she won't do it because it's way off. If you want to change how people work, you have to make it a substantial part of their work process. So we're trying to achieve big groups, loads of patients, loads of users, and to provide them with ease of use. Uh, service and uh, in the end more happy patients. Ease of use sounds logical, but in healthcare, healthcare platforms, uh, portals and stuff, ease of use is not the first thing people think about. <coughs> it's uh, security, barriers, uh, a lot of doors. Um, and we try to help them with less time, less effort to maintain happy customers. It's a really easy task if you're on the outside, but it's a really hard task if you're in healthcare. Uh, we've been founded 18 months ago. Uh, we're now at 19 hospitals in all over the Netherlands, uh, a dozen GP, uh, GPs, about 5,000 uh, monthly active users, three to 400 new users a week, and about 10,000 messages a month. For commercial uh, parties, this is like really small. In healthcare, this is way big. 
Everybody in healthcare is complimenting us with our big growth because we achieved 19 hospitals and 1,000 messages a month. And we're just thinking, oh, wait, that's not, that's not enough. We have to go faster, bigger. We have to do better. We have to have 20 hospitals, 50, uh, uh, 100 GPs. We want 10,000 uh, monthly active users. Okay, but it's 18 months, so we're growing. Uh, our platform is built for 17 million people. So then 5,000 monthly active users is really nice, but not working. Um, what we're trying to focus on, and this is way different from healthcare, we're not reading healthcare or digital health books or healthcare related books. We are reading books about platform revolution, uh, how um, platforms are creating positive feedback loops, uh, how new functionalities or new features lead to more users, uh, how more users lead to more input, lead to more users, etc. We're looking at winner takes it all. Therefore, our need for speed, we want to be the biggest party in healthcare in the Netherlands, and we're trying hard and we're getting there, but we believe winner takes it all. If a patient has a platform or a mobile app to, uh, to manage healthcare, he or she will not have 10 of those apps in the end, probably two or three, uh, maybe five, but not more. And we know uh, the crowd knows best. So in healthcare, talking about communication, it's not really um, a, a leveled relationship, because a doctor has an advantage over you. But we believe that the users, our end users, patients, consumers, know best. They will tell us what to do. They will tell us what not to use. They will tell us which features to uh, delete or which features to add. Um, so what are we? In short, we have a mobile, uh, mobile app, Android, iOS, where a user can uh, interact through messages with their doctors, messages, uh, uh, pictures, attachments. And um, in the healthcare institutions, in the hospitals, people work with a, a web platform. This is really just SaaS, really easy, really flat. It has <laughs> like four buttons. It had like 30 features. We eliminated 25 because they weren't used. This seems really 2002, but this helps us to uh, implement the platform in their EMR. Because doctors are using EMRs. If you want to be there where the magic happens, it's the EMR. You have to integrate your solution into the EMR. Users are working outside with the mobile, uh, doctors are working with the platform. And it's all about communication. When it's messages, it's pictures, it's attachments, it's links, it's communication. It's all about communication. It's about exchanging messages. So we are about communication in the end. Um, but the point is, it's not about the technology which provides the communication. We have to help the doctors to achieve a new customer relationship. Um, the word customer in healthcare is a weird one, but we keep on trying to uh, introduce it. Um, because a customer in, uh, has a choice. A patient has no choice. It just goes to the hospital, sits in a room, waits for the doctor to give its verdict. A customer can choose. It can choose if it wants to go to the hospital or receive a video call. A customer can choose if it wants to share the Apple data with their doctor. Uh, or a customer can choose to go to a different hospital. Um, so we're trying to uh, learn the doctors to look at them as customers and not as patients. It's kind of hard because the theme of today is contextual communication. It goes about the relation, the environment, and uh, the cultural context of the exchange. Well, this is the normal exchange. Now, where you're highly uncomfortable, probably undressed, sitting with someone who knows all about you, even knows more about you because you're learning the verdict there, uh, you're scared, your blood pressure is probably higher than it is normal, your heart rate's going up, and someone's about to tell you what's happening with you in the near future. So there's nothing leveled about this communication. When you walk out of the room and you are about halfway down the parking lot, you remember only 75% of what's just been said. And about half of it is wrong. So when you come home and your wife or your son or your father or your mother says, what did the doctor say? What comes out of your mouth is probably not what you heard here. So we're trying to introduce a new normal exchange where you just are at home with your loving wife or your husband or your kids, uh, reading the messages in which the doctor says, we've got the test results, it all looking good, uh, please come back in six weeks or if you want, schedule a video call so you don't have to come to the hospital. If your wife asks, what did the doctor say? You can just, or you can forward her the message or say, this is what the doctor said. You don't have to go to the hospital, you can read it in your own environment, in your own time. 
and in your own space. So this is the new normal exchange. To do that, it was really uh, looking really good to build it ourselves. That's what normally happens. You think you build a communication platform, we'll just build everything ourselves, because then we know it's good. Uh, it is good, but you don't get the speed. Um, and what we're trying to do is work backwards from uh, uh, the um, customer experience and not start with the technology. So if the customer, which is the patient, is used to using WhatsApp, uh, Facebook, uh, Ideal, uh, whatever, Apple Pay, we can think about how to make uh, a platform, but we can also look at how WhatsApp tried to do it. If we want to make a very, very, very difficult onboarding process, we can do that, but we'd also try and look how the banking share business does onboarding. So we're starting at the customer experience and working our way back toward technology, um, which means we have a basic platform, really basic, a minimal amount of options, uh, integrated into EMR, because that gives context. So a nurse opens our platform inside her EMR, so she doesn't have to switch between applications to see if that's the guy who has the higher blood pressure or low blood pressure. It's all integrated and uh, it's connected to our own uh, app by our own API. Doctors and nurses are using this kind of interface. Um, with, let's say here, green and gray buttons. Because in WhatsApp as well, there are gray is messages sent, green is, or blue, messages read. We've got the same kind of notifications for people because nurses use WhatsApp as well, because nurses are consumers as well in their normal life. And the patient uses an app, really simple interface, communication style, one screen, no settings, not having to uh, say yes to push-ups or to I want this or I want that or this is my name or I want a daily uh, digest, just onboarding through a chatbot, including a link to our service desk, if something goes wrong, they get to talk to our people, helping them. Uh, no interface, no settings, nothing. If we add features, it's all in the interface. We're not adding features by uh, putting a new screen in the app, it's all in the same interface. Because we don't have time to learn our consumers how to use an app. In fact, if we have to learn consumers how to use an app, it's probably the wrong app. Um, and for users, it's more than messaging. They get messages from the doctor, how are you doing? Or we've had the results in, they look great. Or uh, have you been uh, thinking about uh, uh, taking your daily walk? Or don't forget to take your medicine? Or your medicine is ready, your prescription is ready, you can pick it up at the pharmacist. And users, they can add links, pictures, attachments, etc., and emojis. Well, there it gets really right. Because the doctors say, no, no, no. Are they going to send me emojis? Like, yeah, that's like normal communication in the outside world. Probably you use emojis as well as a doctor when you're not a doctor, but you're a dad or something. So we let people use emojis. Well, in every hospital, every doctor says, oh, no, I don't like that. No, I don't want to, I don't want to receive emojis. And two weeks later, they're calling, uh, can I send them back as well? Because they realize emojis for the consumer is really normal way of communicating. It's not really, it's not, it's not technical. They're, they're, uh, a thumbs up is just as well, uh, I am good, as a, I am good. Well, what we're trying to do is to provide communication, easy to use. Uh, we're trying to use that as a way to win the crowd. It's easy, you can onboard easy. There's something in it for everyone. And then we can build on that. So we can use the communication channel as a way to provide new features uh, to build on that relationship. One of the features we added is uh, video calling. Uh, it's an added service. It's not uh, to uh, definitely to call every patient, but if you want, if the doctor wants, they can call a patient. And the next one is sharing data. Yeah, if data is available, why make it complicated sharing with the doctor? But we don't want to be a tech firm. We got we got developers, our own developers, but we want to be a service platform, which means we're not going to build everything ourselves. We're going to try and bring consumer technology, technology from the outside of healthcare into healthcare, into our platform, which makes it easier for us to grow, 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 and fast. There's only one way then. If you're not gonna build it yourself, you have to integrate APIs. So what we did in Excel, for example, this is Thuisarx. If there are any Dutch people here, they probably know Thuisarx. If you're here Googling, let's say, me, you'll get uh, Thuisarx content. It's founded by the Dutch GP Association, 
about 170k visitors a day. Um, and what they're doing is they're providing information about about everything. This is about a red eye, conjunctivitis. Um, so you can go to Google, you can Google about everything, find Thuisarts and read about it. But there's no context. If you get the same link from your doctor, it's about you. Uh, so what we did is we integrated the API from Thuisarts uh, in both backend and front end. So now a doctor can provide you with the same information he probably was telling you, but it's now in the same conversation you have with your doctor. So it gets more relevant because it's suddenly even more about you than it was before. Way more value. Same thing we did with video calling. Video calling in healthcare is quite challenging. Uh, it's about the stability of the connection. It's about finding a room where it can, uh, you can do it. It's about the infrastructure in hospitals with thin clients and stuff and webcams and stuff. So what we did is we uh, said we have to find something where nobody has to use a manual. That sounds really obvious, but we want to eliminate the use of, for using manuals. So we partnered up with the uh, uh, KPN, KPN API store, uh, with uh, uh, Candy, uh, WebRTC, and we added a button. So in our platform, if a user is onboarded with this app, uh, it's all well, there's a webcam, it's a good browser, there's a button. If there's no button, it doesn't work. If there's a button, it works. So a doctor doesn't have to use a setup or a difficult uh, environment or have to look for a specific room. If he has a camera and the setup is right, there's a button and he can push it. Um, and what happens on the other side is a customer. It, he, has an, he or she has an app, but we want them to uh, make it really easy because video uh, calling in healthcare uh, sometimes even contains digital waiting rooms. So what we did in healthcare uh, is where we, we have kind of a, a bad way of working uh, uh, with a waiting room. We're going to uh, transform it digitally. And what we do, we build a digital waiting room. It's like really it's build, rebuilding the real world. But what we did is, well, we don't want to explain the users how to use our video calling. Now, there's a really easy way if you don't want to explain a user how to use video calling, is make it look <laughs> as if someone's really calling. So there's no, our patients, of the patients using uh, our uh, video calling platform, you don't have to tell them what's happening here. Everybody knows there's someone calling, they're looking at the name of their doctor, and they can pick up the phone. So we just uh, build it, built a, a sort of a way of calling where uh, uh, there's no explanation needed, and it's a giant positive feedback loop. In the, our hospitals, there are about five to 10 uh, video calls a week now, uh, which means there are five to ten people not having to go to a hospital to speak to the doctor. Well, five to ten is not really that much, but it's kind of an effort because everybody's talking to their doctor now. Um, and nobody has to explain how this works. The next one uh, is this one. A lot of patients or are, are users, consumers, are collecting data. Maybe in this way, through Cardia, EKG, or an Apple Watch, or maybe even through Runkeeper, Strava, uh, specific uh, uh, apps about migraine, uh, uh, COPD, uh, heart disease, etc. What we found is that users are collecting data, which is probably at some point medically, re medically relevant or not. But it's interesting. If you got a um, patient who uh, needs to uh, walk uh, around the block every day, uh, you can ask them, can you share your walking data with me? If they say they do it and they're not walking data, not sharing walking data, they're probably not doing it. There are a lot of diabetes patients um, collecting data about their uh, uh, glucose waarde, uh, um, about the sugar, and they're sending scanned copies of printed Excel sheets to a nurse who takes about 10 to 15 minutes typing them into their EMR. It's a really, it's a trained nurse. She has to do really different things than typing sheets. So we tied it to tap into the possibility um, uh, so far for a sophisticated function because every user on a mobile phone knows how to share data. It's really standard procedure. You share pictures, you share uh, tweets, you share all this information if it's not medical. But all medical apps, Omron, Apple, Cardia, Cardia, MedApp, MySugar, etc. all have a sharing function. Really easy, you just export your data and you decide who to send it to. 
So what we did is we put ourselves in that little row. Really low tech, really low tech, because there's WhatsApp, there's Facebook, there's LinkedIn, there's Twitter, but there was no platform in healthcare. And we're there. So now if users have <laughs> blood pressure data, their EKG, medication, or uh, about diet, uh, my sugar, movement, fitness, run keeper, they can share that data through our platform with our doctors, which means the doctors get that data in a really structured way, not as printed Excel sheets with the have to scan and enter, but as an Excel sheet, a real life digital Excel sheet, which they can export to the EMR. Really low tech, but high impact. There's no need to explain or embed this technology in, in stuff. It's just people know how to use it and share data. Uh, and we're never going to build an EKG app as good as Cardia or Apple, or, or even make blood pressure as easy as Omron. So we're acting as a platform, combining services and integrating APIs. Um, the point is, we're probably going to be a service provider. So we're connecting services on our platform, and we're going to make it as easy as mobile banking or booking a flight. Um, because why build it yourself if you can bring proven technology in? Well, is the patient a customer then? Um, this one's not, but we try to look at different markets. This is KLM, this is uh, the picture from, I think, early 2000. What they did is they kind of cut up the journey into different pieces. You find a flight, you book a flight, you have a check-in, your flight, you're in destination, you're flying back, uh, how's the weather at home, and you're in pre-sales again, because the moment you land it, you're probably a new customer for your next flight. What we did is we looked at this and we tried to uh, make healthcare or patient journeys about the same uh, uh, perspective. This is the patient, or you, and you've got the uh, before, during, and after. So you got before consultation, during consultation, after consultation, before your operation, no, etc. Uh, the green line is Anonymous public information. This is Thuisarts, the website I just talked about. If you're Googling and you find results, it's not about you. This is when it's about a group, the yellow line. It's, it might be about you. It's about men, for instance, or it's about people interested in APIs. And the blue line is about you. It's totally about you. It's only about you. The closer you get, the more relevant uh, the relationship with the customer. And therefore, if you look at that perspective, um, you can, if you come closer to the blue uh, line, uh, you can help to engage uh, uh, in healthcare in a whole new way. Because when you know the um, kind of the perspective of the user, you can know when it's most relevant to give an advice or to send a message. Or you can add, well, digital doctors, chatbots, uh, et cetera, AI, big data, predictions even, or maybe uh, the weather. Um, so what we're looking at is how to keep an eye on that perspective and make them engage in healthcare. And even maybe for the first time ever in history, we will be present when a person gets sick. This is from 2012, Lucien Engelen. But there will be a time uh, in the near future when someone will be knocking at your door saying, I'm here for the heart attack. Well, <laughs> why? Well, sit down, it's about two minutes out. Because they know about your pattern, they know about your health, they know, they've read your smartwatch, they know what you're doing, they know, et cetera. So if this is the case, uh, we can go further and, uh, and engage the user even more. But, and there, I like the, the previous uh, uh, talk, digital health is about humans. Uh, communication is about humans. It's all about humans. You can try and replace uh, contact with uh, chatbots, but it's always about humans. It's about her, it's about him. So what we're trying to do is um, build digital health around trust, because you have to trust that someone is all reading with you or helping you. You don't want the cold shoulder, you don't want cold technology, you want warm relationship. Or you want the cold technology to help you uh, actively maintain that relationship. So in the same uh, uh, sheet as we started from, uh, we're trying to help at Beter Dichbei to let the doctors realize they can let the outside in or the sunshine in through the blinds uh, without uh, having to give up being doctors. Thank you. So before we move on, uh, any quick questions? Red light's on, does that mean it's on? 
Uh, hello, uh, my name is Olga, and as a customer, uh, I also concerned about price of the health services. So, do you integrate with insurance companies? Because I also like usually you sign this agreement, and you don't know what exactly included. Maybe I have like ten free physiotherapy sessions, or what can I do? How much is gonna cost me? Um, in, in, in the Dutch insurance system, beter dichtbij is free. Um, if you're in a doctor's office, uh, uh, it'll uh, cost you money at some point. <laughs> Your insurance company costs you money. Um, there are ways for uh, doctors to, if, you, if they're using this to replace an actual physical consultation, they can uh, uh, get money for it as well. But as a customer, you're not paying extra. You're probably even paying less in the end as a patient. Yeah, well, we're, we are not going to fix that problem, but you can ask your doctor through Beter Dichtbij what it's cost and where it's going to, where it, where it end up. Okay. One last question. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Lawrence Mann from uh, Ribbon. Um, I was just wondering about the adoption rate. I mean, is it, are doctors taking this on quickly? Are they adopting it? And, and is the adoption in line with your expectations, what you thought would, would happen? Because, you know, we're all humans and we're resistant to change in some ways. Yeah, yeah. And doctors are even more human in that way. Um, now, doctors are trying to cope with uh, telephone calls in the end, because everybody's calling them, calling and calling them. Uh, if you're using messaging platforms, you're kind of uh, eliminating the, the need to be uh, at, uh, at the telephone at the same time. So in the, in the, in the early days, they were like, oh, this is going to take me more time, or, or it's going to take me uh, loads of more time. But in the end, they see it's going to take them less time to do the same work. And then the adoption rate goes... Up. Adoption rate on consumer side, is, they, everybody likes it. Um, we've run out of time, I'm afraid. So can I ask you to put your hands together again once more for a